Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Tuesday, July 9, 2024, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a Time for Change call tomorrow night around 9.15 or so p.m. Eastern. You might want to take some notes on this one. We're going to talk about the, uh, in a very simplified way, um, the new financial system for the planet. Um, How it's structured, what it's about, how it works, and so that people get a clear understanding of what's coming in so they're not confused and misinformed and misdirected. Uh, this information came from uh, one of our one of the banking families, and not the bad ones um, in Europe. So they they're sharing this information. So I'm sharing it with those who wish to know about it. Keeping a story. Maybe you've done this. You know. Keeping a story from your past alive takes a lot of work and will drain all of your energy. Have you ever interacted with people that they have this story, right, about their life, and it's from their past, right? But they they repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and refer back to it constantly in interaction conversation. And when people do this, it will keep them living in the illusion and never awaken to the divinity within their own being. And this this illusionary mind loves... And remember, the mind is an illusion. We created the ego to assist it as an illusion. So the illusion can never awaken to the divinity within your being. So it loves to create stories about stories. Heck, you may even be creating a story about this very exploration of stories. The reality is is that you are not this mind, this illusion. You're not this ego, this illusion, nor your body, and certainly not an accumulation of all of your stories. You are much more than can be expressed in words. You are an infinite soul beyond the ideas of freedom and love. You are and always will be so much vaster than any story your ego could ever invent. You will continue to exist long after this story has been forgotten by you and this world. Your being is naturally expansive and completely free. You have just been covering up your true infinite nature with stories. Now, the tricky part in transcending any story is that our ego loves the drama of an emotionally juicy adventure. It's like talk of ice cream to a child. Our life's traumas and deep issues are so personal, wild, crazy, and feel so real that they often make us feel unique and that we are even someone superior or special. The truth is that everyone was birthed uniquely super special. And we all have the same core issues deep inside. These core issues are about being unloved, unwanted, abandoned, and unworthy. What a great recipe 
to instigate massive transformation in one's lifetime. Now you may find yourself sticking to these issues because the mind gets busy entertaining the victim story instead of being truly curious about recognizing your divine infinite nature. These personal issues can make up a major part of who you think you are. So to let go of them in many ways can feel like letting go of your entire identity. If you drop the story, you would have to do the scariest thing of all. You'd need to totally reinvent yourself. Now, maybe this isn't such a bad idea, bad thing. Perhaps it's even a good thing. You could choose to only be loved, free, powerful, and without any limitations. Is this a challenge you would be willing to take on? It's a question you ask yourself. Letting go of your story may feel like dying, yet in the end, there is no death without some kind of rebirth. So how does one truly transcend their story? Well, you, you step outside of it. You just watch it. Do not participate in it. Notice if you are focusing on what you want or don't want. See how present you are to the now moment. Or just reprogramming yourself with more illusions from your past. The experience you have will always be created from your personal interpretation and universal perception. Now, if you find that you are really stuck putting energy into how you aren't enough of this or that, and you may simply need some tools to shift your experience, and it, it, it obviously it's a commitment for any of us to do this. But you, what you do is you stop retelling your story. A lot of times it's, people don't know they're doing that, it's just out of habit. When you hear yourself telling somebody your famous story that makes you feel small, powerless, or less than divine, immediately stop yourself, even if you are in a mid-sentence. It's being aware of this. As soon as you stop repeating your story, you stop giving it energy, and the story soon withers away. Imagine a just. I, what I do is I take a, a visual. I visualize this super bright neon stop sign, right? And I put that up every single time I find myself going into one of my stories. Because we have more than one. And for me, it, as soon as I do that, I stop repeating my story. I stop giving it energy. And, and then the, the story soon withers away. So have you ever have you ever been in a situation where maybe you're excited or something and you and you're just kind of you're you're just blabbering constantly, right? Enthusiastically, just like motor mouth. And what happens is is that when you put this and believe me, it works. This you visualize this neon stop sign. Big, not my little teeny thing, but all you can see is the stop sign in front of you. It's not, irrit it's not irritating type of a thing. 
And when you do that, you stop talking. You, you don't move a muscle. Be absolutely still and silent. And then you go on deeper inside to discover where this story is coming from and what this part of you actually is yearning to feel, be, do, or have. The only reason these come up is because they want something. Attention, it's, it's always something before they just disintegrate to go away. Most of us will, will press them back or depress them and not, you know, I, I, I'm not going to deal with that. So you, you start digging. And if, you're, if you are socializing while you are storytelling and you need some space to do the digging, gently remove yourself from the situation. I've done things like I'll be in the middle of a conversation with about five or six people and then I'll say, excuse me a moment, I, you know, so I, I'll go to the bathroom. That's all right because no, it's not you know anyone's shocked or anything. You just you say uh, you know, use yourself. So what you want what you want to do is you want to investigate the source of this saboteur. It is worth it because these stories can ruin your life or transform it either way. If you take time to really look at your stories you'll discover what it takes to transcend them completely by simply seeing how your story is an illusion of the past and that the ego is stubbornly holding on to. You are instantly free of it. Gratitude plays, a lot of people don't realize this, a huge, massive part in our lives. Like, when you identify the story that you're most attached to, the one you repeat most often, each time you start repeating it, simply state one thing that you are grateful for instead. You got this story and you keep repeating it and you say to yourself, well, I'm deeply grateful for the very moment I'm in. You refocus your mind on what is working in your life and what you are grateful for right now. There are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of things that you can be grateful for no matter where you are or who you are. You can be grateful that the sun rose this morning to heat, your, heat the planet. Uh, that you have clean drinking water, or that you are breathing with life in this moment instead of dying. The list goes on and on and on. Plus, it exercises your creativeness. You get real creative on identifying things that you deeply are grateful for. I mean, not superficially. There's a lot of those, too. But through the heart-mind and you sit in repose. Repose is a French word for relax. So you sit in, 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 as in repose, relaxation. And you go over things that you're deeply grateful for. It's amazing what this does. You know, we're, we're so caught up, none of us are exempt from it. We, we, from time to time we get caught up in ourselves. We get caught up out there, the physical world. We're always being seduced by the ego mind, uh, directed here, directed there. And it seems like that we're, to some extent, in some kind of a race. You ever feel that? Not, you know, some are, I mean, blatantly in a race. Others are kind of, eh, you know, 50-50, and then others just very subtly. But do you ever feel like, you're in a race for some reason that you and you don't have time to really take in the beauty and you don't have time for repose and so you 
you just, boom, you're just heading straight. You're, you're scurrying and running and rushing and hurrying. But you really don't know why, but you feel it. You, you're, like when you're taking your time on something and you're feeling really good, you're just kind of, you're not rushing anything and you're just floating along. You aren't looking at the clock or anything like that. Now, but then you have someone else that says, in a hurry. You know, that they're under that pressure that they put themselves under to be in a hurry. Oh, I'm going to miss this, I'm going to have to do this, blah, 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 blah. But you don't let that bother you. You're still in that ease, that expanse, that repose. And it feels good. You don't feel disrupted inside. You feel good. Now, the other being is saying, you know, this is going to be late, and this and that, and blah, 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 blah. And the interesting thing about it is, is that when you stay in that repose, relaxed state about whatever you're doing, and, and then you go from point A to point B, everything is fine. Nothing is out of the ordinary. And you didn't, need, you didn't have to rush and stress yourself to get there. Now, isn't it, do you notice that when you expend your energy in anger, frustration, irritation, you notice what it, how you feel and afterwards and what, what it, how it takes for you to rebalance? It's like when you have couples and they get an argument and it's disruptive, right? Married, get an argument. And it, it, it does set you back. It takes some time to recover. Now, switch that and when you, you're hugging your girlfriend, you're hugging your wife or husband, or boyfriend, how good that feels. See the difference? It's huge. It's huge. We don't really take the time to look at that. We just do it. It's out of habit. So ask yourself. One of the things in the quiet time of this meditation which one do you prefer? Obviously, unless you have some more severe issues than you thought, you're going to choose the hugging, the holding, the kissing. You're going to choose that. You're sure as heck not going to choose where you're irritated, frustrated, rubbed wrong, however you want to put it. Because of the frequency. When we know, okay, you, I, I, I believe that more and more people are discovering that the frequency of irritation is like taboo almost. It's the frequency of repose, relax, ease, is so much, so much higher of a frequency. When you're happy, genuinely, happy about something, whatever it may be, happy just being, your frequency is totally different. And you, you attract others to it. Now what happens when you're the opposite of that spectrum and you're irritated, uh, frustrated, angry, whatever, are you going to attract people? Not really. People don't, you don't like being around that, do you? So you're not going to attract people that are going to want to be around that. Well, okay, have a good day. Or have you ever had an encounter with somebody that is, you don't even need, they don't even need to open their mouth, that you immediately pick up on the fact that there's something going on with them and they're very irritated about something. Don't know what, but they're irritated about something. 
I can feel it, and they're like 20 feet away. All of us are not exempt from that through this life. We've all experienced it more than once. It could be something really silly that triggers us. And then we go off on a tangent. You see, all these things that I've just shared pull us away from discovering who and what we are. Keeps us in the yesterday and tomorrow where we suffer. When you have expectations about something, okay, and we're, none of us are exempt from that either. We've all at one time or another had expectations or attachments. And they don't happen. How do you feel? Well, you don't feel that great. Okay? You might say, I was really counting on that. I can't believe that didn't happen. That's attachment. That's expectation. It's attachment to the outcome of it. Now, you notice how good you feel when you say, hey, if this happens, great, phenomenal. If it doesn't, great, phenomenal. You cover both ends genuinely. You feel a lot different than, the, than on the flip side where you have expectations and attachment. Some people have you know, attachment to things, so they, they, they don't let go. You know what I mean? They, it's like, no, 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 I can't. I can't sell this to you or I can't give this to you. It's, it's too sentimental. You ever done that one? Where it's too sentimental? And you, you just, memory, right? The funny thing is, is that you carry those memories. And whatever the item is, it kind of reassures you or you reflect. You know, I remember when, and I remember this. And they're all, a lot of them are good feelings. But on the flip side, some of us will say, hey, I really enjoyed this. Now it's time for someone else to enjoy it. You ever done that one? And when we're... When you identify the story that you are most attached to, the one that you repeat most often, each time you start repeating it, simply state one thing that you are grateful for instead. So you counteract it. Okay? Refocus your mind on what is working in your life and what you are grateful for right now. Endless. Excuse me, it's endless. You can be grateful for ev anything, anytime, all the time. When we do move into a state of repose, just look around at this world and notice the beauty, the detail, and the exquisite abundance. The more time you spend in gratitude, the faster your ego stories will die and become distant memories. When we are in a place of gratitude, we automatically send out positive energetic vibrations, which in turn magnetize to you the kind of positive uplifting things you want to manifest. Once you leave your story behind, you can see the truth of your existence and experience total freedom from your ego's suffering and limiting beliefs. This is a, this is a great habit to get into. And it helps you become liberated once and for all from your stories. You know, a lot of people will say, the ego will kick in and say, I don't have time to say all this stuff, all these exercises and all these things that you suggest I do. I don't have time for that. That would be all I would be doing, would be all that. But it's an ego mind gripping heavy duty. 
when, when that response comes from you. You choose. And of course a lot of people, they're just downright lazy. They're just not interested in spending that time so that they can be at peace and free from all of these things that they've created through the illusionary mind which keeps them contained. So every time you feel like you have this need to tell the story, your story, focus immediately on the gratitude. Now, interesting quote from Mark Victor Hansen. Good quote. The journey to financial freedom starts the minute you decide you were destined. The minute you decide you were destined for prosperity, not scarcity. For abundance, not lack. Now, a lot of people will look at that and say, oh, that's, no, that's not possible. You know, you, you can't just say stuff like that and it's going to change. It's the ego mind keeping that being away from discovering that. And isn't it interesting? All of this on this planet, all this stuff happening, and there's a lot of it, Abundance is the inherent nature of this universe. Inherent nature. Abundance. Prosperity. I mean, we all live in a truly abundant universe where there is a plethora of things, ideas, love, money, friends, opportunities all around us. Now, not everybody, even though you know some of us may not feel it all the time, this abundant universe is always available to us right in this moment. You don't need to search for abundance outside. You see, that's, that's how we've been programmed. You've got you to find it out there. Interesting, old, old, old story. Father says to his two sons, go out and find the riches that you desire, that you want. The wealth, the fame, and the power. So these two sons, for years, searched, searched, and searched for this wealth and prosperity and power and abundance, all of it. Time went by and it took its toll. Okay? So, we had one of the sons, he didn't make it. He passed. The other son goes home. There's his father, a lot older. Just kind of sitting. And the son just, you know, he'd been used to digging, literally digging into the soil and looking here and there like a, like a um, archaeologist. And constantly searching and digging and seeing and find artifacts and treasures. His hands were all gnarly. And you could tell he was broken down quite a bit. Through the disappointment, and the letdown constantly, never seeming to find this massive wealth, abundance, prosperity. So he's looking in the backyard. They had this big, expansive backyard. There was a lot of acres. And one day he just decided that he was going to go out in the backyard and start digging. So what the heck? He was so used to doing it anyway. So he starts digging, and he hits, he th thinks it's a rock, and he finds this massive vein of 
diamond. Look, because he knows, because he's learned, you know, identifying these different wealth items. Prosperity. That freaks him out, and he's looking at it, and he goes, you got to be kidding me. At first, he just didn't believe it. He thought it was like, you know, maybe quartz or something, but it was just raw diamond. He starts thinking, so he goes to another area, and he starts digging, and about three feet down, he hits something hard again. And right there, there was this massive vein of pure gold. Again, he's freaking out. He goes, this can't, how can this be? I spent my whole life searching for wealth, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find the riches and prosperity. And all that time, and the father knew it, all that time, all the wealth that he could ever desire and want, all the prosperity, all of it was there in his own backyard. This is what happens to most of us. We get so caught up in the ego mind, seeking and seeking and seeking out there, we get frustrated. We get upset. We get let down. We suffer because of the guidance is through the ego mind. He never thought to look in his own backyard. Okay. He spent all that time seeking and digging and searching and found nothing. So in other words, our prosperity, each of us, our abundance, all of it, financial freedom, comes when you decide you were destined for it. You were destined for prosperity, not scarcity. So you know that inherently so, you will be prosperous. You will not be financially destitute. You see, there's a lot of that that goes on, and a lot of people don't know that. They think it's out there. And it really isn't. Never has been. This is why we stay in a state of gratitude 24-7. Even when you're snarling upset with something, you immediately switch to what am I grateful for in this very moment? I am grateful for this very moment I'm in. Because this body's breathing, I'm in it. That is huge gratitude. Does it make any sense that as a civilization we've been taught to do what? Worry, stress, fear, right? We haven't been taught much about gratitude. We discover it. Some of us will just discover it on our own. And the difference between that and disappointment. See, our natural state of being is abundance, prosperity that just undulates. It moves constantly. See, you, can, you notice that just from your own perspective on what you've learned so far in this life. Those who don't keep it flowing, undulating, are nine times out of ten miserable, frustrated, addicted, and depressed. But it was never meant to be locked up in box. When you let go, the purpose of the story I just shared with you, to experience this abundance, simply let go of trying to achieve it. Trust it is here now. And gently practice receiving it. You become like the natural waves in the ocean and surrender to this water-like flow of energy inside you. Where it is. Your real life is like a dancing river of energy. 
that will continue on well after your body is gone. And to tap into this wonderful fluidity inside, find your breath and align yourself with its movement it will lead you directly into the abundant flow that's here. Now, the main thing is your ego mind is constantly telling you, relentlessly telling you, that you aren't abundant, that you've got to go out there and find the abundance that you seek, when all the time the abundance is in you. It's your attitude. It's how you direct your frequency and energies, is how, how much wealth, abundance, and prosperity you're going to experience. I mean, this universe always, for all of us, is always sending us loads of good energy, new ideas, people to help us tap into feeling this natural abundant state, to experience this. And this is absolute ego will try to convince you it's not absolute when you truly want to become a massive channel of abundance then only pay attention to what you are grateful and thankful for not just once in a while all the time and then you're not thinking about abundance and prosperity All you're focused on is the gratitude, your attitude of gratitude on a continual basis for everything in your life. And the more gratitude that we have, the more abundance we're going to attract. Demanding energy only creates more poverty. Conscious, it's a it's a it's a consciousness, it's attitude. It's, it creates more poverty consciousness and lack of things to be grateful for. Why would we want to do that? Does that make any sense to any of us? You see that demanding energy. You know, I want this, get that. You know, I've got to have that. And that type of attitude... This creates more poverty consciousness and lack of things to be grateful for. It's, it's, it is a debatable, see, but the ego mind, since we're so programmed with it, it's going to convince you that no. The more gratitude you have, the more abundance you'll attract. That's not true. It doesn't happen that way. You've got to go out there. You've got to demand these things for yourself. You're going to get anywhere. You've got to demand these things. And the only thing you're going to get is more poverty consciousness and lack of things to be grateful for. We're master energy movers. Okay? What we believe, what you believe to be true, moves through the lens of our mind as living energy and becomes the reality of our lives. Now, if we believe ourselves to be limited, which most people on this planet believe, we get to be right about that. But it is not our ultimate truth. Mary, Man, and Morrissey. We block ourselves from it through the ego mind. You, you drop your shields, embrace your abundant nature, your natural state of being. The secret to feeling your abundant nature right now is to remove the walls blocking you from it. And you know what these walls are? They're illusions, of course. These shields protecting your heart from getting hurt, conned, deceived, or abandoned again. All it takes is one time for any of us. And then we start building these walls, bars, to protect ourselves. We're actually protecting our ego. 
Remove any shielding around your heart and imagine tossing it into a great bonfire. Let, that, let your armor melt away. If the shielding feels like it is still there or coming back, simply invite the fire inside of you to consume your heart and any walls it has. You breathe deeply and physically open your arms wide, inviting this fiery purification to remove all defenses from your life. When you feel that all shields are removed with several deep breaths, imagine pulling everything in this entire universe into your heart. All creation is pouring into your heart. The stars, planets, earth, all beings. Feel how truly abundant life really is. I'll join you in the meditation. I'll return to close this up.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and the slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still and focused on your breath rising and falling. Gently let go of the physical world. When you are no longer attached to your possessions or your ideas about those possessions, you suddenly become free from everything. Being non-attached doesn't mean you do not care or that you're not going to manifest more things. Being free from attachment means being free from your mind. It allows you to refine your desires. Look at what truly matters and live your life truly without fear. Let go of all the stuff and better things will manifest your way. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We will return here Wednesday, July 10, 2024, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. And a little after 9.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our time for change call. Important call, the time for change call for tomorrow night for a lot of people. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, and purest of the purest, purest. Eternal gratitude at all times. Always be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. No matter what's going on outside there, or inside here. Open your heart. Allow the magic to flow in.